Hey guys, welcome back for another episode of Big Rig Roundtable. Uh, the internet told us uh, that they wanted to see more. The viewers that are uh, on the, the YouTube channel, they are kind enough to leave some comments and uh, uh, let us know how much they enjoyed the, the last episode, which was the first episode. Uh, so, hey, you know, we're, we're back at it for, for another round. And uh, obviously, you know, the, 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 the viewers uh, liked the topics and they gave some suggestions for topics and also, also some questions. So today we're going to answer some of those questions that were left on the, um, on the last episode. And of course, um, some people may remember who was on the first episode here, but I'm just going to let you guys introduce yourself really quickly. And uh, let's start with, with, with Scooby. He's directly below me. Introduce yourself and what you're up to today. Scooby Melcher and Patches. Uh, we're sitting here in Nashville, North Carolina, getting ready to move a little further north to start our backhaul into Florida. And, you know, there's a lot of cab over fan fans out there. So uh, quickly uh, give a rundown on what you're sitting in there. Oh, I'm driving, uh, I have an old glory, I guess you would think. It's uh, 1991, K100E. I'm running a Detroit 60 Series, a baby. But uh, she's pushing about 425 horse to the rears. Got a nine-speed Eaton Fuller transmission running on 22.5s with a uh, 4.11 gear ratio, I think, is what it, what's running back there. A 4.10, I'm, I'm not mechanical. Awesome. But she's a little baby, does the job. Awesome. And uh, for the viewers that want to see uh, more of Scooby's ride, you can actually see his truck in the video called How Does a Florida Way Station Work? So uh, check that out when you want. I'll put a link in the, in the video descriptions uh, below. So uh, over on the right side, we have uh, Hayden Eady. Uh, that's uh, the bottom right-hand corner. Introduce yourself, and what are you up to today, Hayden? I'm Hayden Eady. I'm from Alabama, owner-operator. Um, president of the Southern Chapter of the Southtown Large Cars. Um, kind of sitting at home today, uh, hoping to find the loadout tomorrow or TV sometime. Keep this deal rolling and go from there. Awesome. And above you, who do we got there? Name is Mondo Cardona, uh, owner operator of Cardona Transport, out here in uh, Locust, North Carolina, just outside of Charlotte. Uh, we're just lounging around the house today. Got our feet kicked up. Uh, hopefully, get a load out tomorrow as well. Uh, we got Chris Santoyani back. Uh, Chris, introduce yourself and tell us what you're up to today. I'm uh, Chris Antoyani, uh, national president and co-founder of Chi-Town Large Cars. Um, here at home in Chicago, just enjoying the weather and the day with the family. Um, so, Chris, last week, in the, in the first episode of the Big Rig Roundtable, we were talking about uh, tips for being a, a tips for a new owner operator, and through through conversations in the past, you know, you told me that you're a, you're an owner operator. But I want for you, for you to, to give some tips that, uh, give some tips to Mondo that he might be able to benefit from. And hopefully not duplicating what people have heard last week, but if you can, if you can dig into some, some unique aspects, um, you know, that'd be great. I know a lot of the guys touched base last week on maintenance and how important maintenance is, but the other major thing when it comes to owning your own truck, um, Something that's really important is, is having a good tax accountant. You have to have a good tax accountant. A good accountant will make or break you. You gotta have somebody that specializes in trucking. You can't just go to H and R Block and and find your regular tax person. They're not gonna know all the ins and outs, all the write offs, all the important details of running a trucking company, keeping it successful, and keeping your good standing with the IRS. So. Uh, that's that's a huge thing. Make sure you find yourself a really good tax accountant that you can work with. You know, file your taxes quarterly, and and make sure to keep everything on the up and up. You know, there's there's an old uh, an old joke that even Jesus himself is afraid of the IRS. <laughs> okay, yeah, I appreciate that. I'll keep that in mind. Let's jump into some of the questions that were asked from the the last episode of the Big Rig Roundtable. Uh, Bob Tanner left a question. And he said, uh, maybe next time we can talk more on how to find a good company to lease on to or how to find a good broker. 
So the, the, that's a twofold question. Uh, finding a good company to work for uh, is, is not always easy. Uh, it may come easier to some, harder to others. Um, what I said was that uh, I did it the easy way. I just formed a good company and went to work for it. Um, as far as loads and brokers and shippers, um, I find that time and grade cures most problems and most issues with that because you form partnerships and business relationships with companies that you are uh, comfortable with working and you have uh, basically a fit. And uh, But word of mouth, dependability, showing up every day for work and, you know, like all the other things, maintenance, shiny wheels make deals. I don't care what anybody says. I don't roll dirty. Uh, I, could, I could be driving a trash truck and I would still make sure that it was clean of all the debris. You know, it's just my way. Now, um, that was great, Scooby. Thanks for, for relaying that. What was that, that saying, the whole saying? Oh, shiny wheels make deals. Cool. They don't have to be polished, but if they're clean, you got a better chance of impressing somebody because if you take care of your equipment, then they're going to be pretty well uh, confident that you will take care of their load inside your equipment. The other part of the question was, what are good points to look for and certain aspects to watch out for from getting scammed? or working for just enough money to keep them going broke. Again, it's a lot of word of mouth. Um, you, you, deal, you try to deal with uh, brokers that are reputable. You try to deal with brokers that um, friends of yours have done business with. You know, we, we do a lot of that in the club. Somebody may come and say, hey, I've got a guy who's got eight loads of, you know, eight flatbed loads that are running from point A to point B. He needs them covered. None of our guys are going to put that to us without knowing that's a stand-up broker. That's a guy who pays his bills because that guy doesn't ever want to have to call another club guy and say, hey, this guy didn't pay or you know, something like that. That's Some some guys get, get lucky and they for an outfit or at least done with an outfit that pays right away. Other companies may take 30, 60, even 90 days to pay you. Well, you get two or three checks that don't come in because brokers aren't paying or you know, uh, your accounts receivable isn't, isn't doing what it's supposed to be doing. You could lose your truck just that fast. You could start out on, on top of the world and three months later be completely bankrupt due to some let's give it a chance kind of decisions. You have to know what you're doing. And if you don't, don't be afraid to ask. So Dreamcatcher2004 from YouTube left a question and he said he'd like to know about uh, trailer freight and, and more specifically, diversity of loads according to pay. So each of you guys, you haul different things. What do you think? The, what do you think is making money right now? I don't think any one thing makes any better money than the next. It just depends on where you stand on on your own ground as far as what you're going to run for. Um, as far as how much freight is out there. From what I'm seeing and, you know, just overall, I mean, obviously I have 150 different opinions because of the club, but I, from what I see, there's there's plenty of freight in, in, in anything, flatbed, dry van, refrigerated, tanker, there's plenty of freight out there. Um, it just depends on what you want to do. And once again, stand on your ground money-wise, you know, uh, obviously oversized loads and stuff like that pay more money, but... Once again, when you break it all down, you can only run during daylight hours with an oversized load. So it may pay huge money, but if it takes you three days to deliver it, the guy running a regular step deck load or a regular flatbed load or a van you know, trailer, it doesn't matter. That can, he may do three loads in that same amount of time for either the same amount of money or more. So it just depends on where where you want to be and, and what you want to haul and again stand in your ground for the money you're going to run for now another the other part of dream capture 2004's question was modifications to improve mile per gallon um and i'm i'm the other guy um i was, I was always go 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 hurry hurry uh, but that was in a company truck you know but i've got my own truck i'm putting the bill for everything and uh one thing that really gets you is that fuel, and uh, the main tool is that right foot. 
and uh, you got to be real easy with it. Um, I mean, but as far as any modifications to my truck, I mean, I've got it turned up just a little bit as far as horsepower, but that's it. And I'm getting five, five and a half miles a gallon. Um, but that's about where I'm at is just be real easy with that right foot. My experience is a lot of it has to do with the truck. My truck's 300 inch wheelbase flat top sleeper. No matter what you do, then it's going to get five, five and a half miles per gallon. I don't have anything on mine. I've got mine turned up. It's doing like six and a quarter to the ground. Five, five and a half miles per gallon pulling a reaper, 300 inch wheelbase flat top sleeper. I don't think there's nothing I can do to that to make it do any better. Whether it's in a, a you know, Pittsburgh Power or a Diesel Creek or I don't think there's nothing that makes it do any better with the truck the way it's set up. Both our trucks are cats, um, with the electronic, one the mechanical. The mechanical, drive it right, it's going to get five, two, five, three. Um, if you push your foot into it, it's going to get five, three, 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 ten wheel base, flat top, um, pulling pretty much any of our trailers is about the same. Um, the electronic one, um, it's averaging five five on a, on a reefer or a bull rack. So if you put your foot into it, it it's just going down. Um, we don't have no no uh, Pittsburgh power or nothing on that. But that electronic one's turned up quite a bit. And that helped a lot. Um, we were in the little fives of it, and when we turned it up, it, it got in the fives per deep. Just because the motor wasn't having to work so hard. It's a two seventy five wheel base flat top. I mean, we're catching a lot of air with that trailer. All right, that was awesome, boys. Thanks for weighing in on that. So, um, so now let's see if we can get in uh, a gentleman that wanted to be on the Big Rig Roundtable. Uh, let's see if we can. Get Rob, you know, just just because just to bring everybody up to speed, what were some of the things that that you're looking to to know about, and some 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 tips that you're after? Well, uh, for me, it's because you know. I pull a flatbed all the time, and one of the, and I need to know what things I need to put on the truck, and I can't put on the truck because I want to keep it as much of a working truck as it is, you know, just a nice, clean, all-around truck. And if it's, you know, it's just going to be hard to do that and go in and out of these pipe yards like out in Houston and different places like that. So that's what I was trying to get an idea of, you know, like for the interior and the floor, what could I put in there to keep it from scratching off or just being real nasty. But I have a small dog that care of them too. But something that's gonna be, you know, easy to clean up, but it's also gonna be the most feasible thing too, you know, where I'm not jumping in on the hardwood floor and scratching the floor and stuff like that. Pure plastic, I'm actually doing the building floors for mine now. I'm doing a painted aluminum floor for my truck and then when I get that done and clear coated good, then I'll lay the clear plastic over that. It can be wet sanded and buffed, or it can be peeled off and you put on as it gets scratched up. Uh, not that expensive. It's you know compared to having to repaint a floor or redo hardwood floors once a year, very inexpensive. So that's what I'm looking at doing now. As soon as I get my floor done, I've already ordered the roll of vinyl, and I'll put that down on my floor. And you know I do flatbed and and reefer, uh, and I'm like. Uh, Rob, I go in and out of places that's, you know, job sites, construction sites, and stuff like that, where you're going to get shit in your truck, uh, stuff in your floor. Uh, if you got them protected, you can, you can, you know, redo it without having to redo the whole floor. I know guys who have done peel and stick tiles. You know, let's say that their um, their truck's black and red, and they'll checkerboard black and red peel and stick tiles on the inside of the truck, and it's like your typical kitchen floor. I mean, it's it's really easy to wipe down and clean. Whether you use a rag or Windex, or you know, uh, you know, when you blow it out with your air gun and stuff like that. I mean, they're they're real real easy to keep clean, and they're really really durable. You don't notice, you know, uh, as far as like wearing work boots and stuff like that or scratching them. You don't even notice it because they're they're durable. They're they're meant for kitchen floors. Rob, what are some of the other questions that you have? Oh, uh, you know. One of the main things I want to make sure of before I start to do any of the adding the lights and the chrome and all that is what's the best thing that I can do as far as for to make sure the motor is mechanically sound as it can be so I'm not the guy with a nice truck on the side of the road broke back, you know. 
that's what I want. I mean, I've had people tell me do two or three oil samples. I have one guy tell me put on the dyno, and so that's, that's something else I'd like to know. You know, I don't, you know, I want to have a nice truck and it be dependable all the time. What are you driving? No, what I have, I have a '99 Peterbilt 379 with a million six hundred thousand miles on it, but the motor was rebuilt. It's probably got about maybe three hundred thousand on a complete out of frame rebuild with all brand new parts from Cummins. Uh, it's an ISX Cummins, you said? No, it's the old uh, N14 and 520. Oh, the N14, well, I would do a couple of oil samples on it maybe, but if it's only got a 300,000 miles on it on an out of frame from Cummins, I wouldn't be worried about it for another six, seven hundred thousand. You may have to put it down put head gaskets on it. Uh, the worst part about it, in 14 they have a weak injector system. The bad design from Cummins, uh, keep a couple of extra injectors in the truck with you and hammer down. Uh, that's uh, a guy, a friend of mine had bought a, a fleet of 15 trucks in 97 that he had in 14 them. We tore those down at a million five to overhaul them and could have been my truck. I'd put a new set of rings on the old pistons and bearings and put everything out back together. I never would have, never would have done a complete overhaul on it if they wasn't that good. And he serviced his every 25 to 30,000 miles. He's nothing but low tail oil since they were new. Uh, those motors are about the best engine Cummins has ever made except for the injector problem. You know, I want to do some funny word words. It's been repainted. Uh, but on the back, and you know, probably going to have to mask off everything from the super pack. Take all the wheels, tires off, and everything, and have it all just sand blasted and repainted. And I'm thinking about painting my front fenders either silver or black because my truck is a blue color. And if, if I did that, would you, you know, want to paint the frame a different color or leave it the blue like it is for the match there for the front fender? That's going to be personal preference. Whatever you want to do is. is you know, you're building this truck for you. Don't worry about what I think or what Chris thinks or what Stevie thinks. Build the truck to suit you. If you have to, spray a little spot on the frame and look and see what it looks like blue or what it looks like the, the fender color, whatever. Build it to suit you. Don't worry about what anybody else thinks. Build the truck to suit you. I said you can't build a truck wrong if you're building it for yourself. You're building it for your taste and, and the way you want it to look going down the road. I mean... You know, some guys like, you know, and I, and I, me and Hayden, I mean, a lot, pretty much all of us have, have been around the show trucks for a lot of years. You know, some guys are into the, they'll paint the whole truck one color and then do fenders, filler panels, frame and rear fender. Like I said, the, ma the main thing is everybody's got their own different taste. What I did, you know, I've built a few trucks. What I do is I take pictures of each truck that catches my eye. I get pictures of it, whether it's out of magazines, whether I take it at the truck stop, whatever. I lay it out on the kitchen table, and I look at all the different ideas, and I figure out by looking at all of them what exactly I want to go with, and then I go from there because at least I have a visual of what I'm looking at. Uh, where's where's the best place to try to say buy your lights? I want to put all clear LED lights on the truck, but... I want to buy the whole panel with the lights already in it, basically, so you just clip it on and it's ready to go. Or do you have to buy the lights separate on all of them? No, you can buy them. Well, I know one place you can start looking at, a little place up there in Joplin, Missouri, called Four State Trucks. Don't plug, I'll, 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 t I'll tell Rob that when you're ready to buy the stuff, call me and uh, we'll talk about it. I'll find me on Facebook, send me a friend's request, and uh, there's some places closer that's not going to say any cheaper. But they're a lot closer uh, that you can buy that stuff, you know, that you can actually drive there and pick the stuff up and, and look at what they've got instead of having to try to go through a catalog and order it. You know, if that's what you want to do, that's fine. I've ordered a lot of stuff from my truck from a and ordered it. But four states, I've bought a lot of stuff from four states also. So, you know, we, we, we can make sure you get whatever you need. Now, one of the things I want to know is I've looked at exhaust 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 and i want to put the eight inch pipe in my truck to come off from the bottom all the way to the top and i look how much is that about 2500 three grand probably depending on what you get uh mine were 3800 or seven 
but I got the seven inch T pipe, Wi Fi and all that stuff, yeah. clamp, brackets and everything. Well that's what I I wanna do it and I want it to look good and I want it to look right, you know, and I don't mind having to wait a little longer to get exactly what I want. So. Right. Uh, I just want people to see my truck when that goes down the road and they go, oh, yeah, that's a nice route he's got there and he, you know, he's working at it all the time. Right. And it's not so much for me, it's, it is for me, but I told Chris, uh, my truck number is 41. And that's how my father was when he passed away. And I pretty much want to take this truck and fix it up nice and dedicate it to my mother and my father. And my mother's still alive and didn't even hop in the truck with me and go for a ride, but, uh, I told them I wanted to be a truck driver growing up. They said, hey, that's what you want to do. Just be the best that you can be, you know. Right. And uh, I had my days like everybody else. I don't want to quit and just go do a normal job. But there's no way I could ever do it. I love driving too much. It's in my blood. And once it gets there, it's there. It's not going anywhere. I'm, I'm less than an hour away from you if you need anything. You know, I, like I said, I got my shop and everything. If you need somewhere to, you know, Somebody to help you with some of it. Just holler at me if I'm not out on the road trucking. You know, we'll we'll do what we can. All right. I tell you one thing I want to learn is uh, polish. I want to learn how to polish my truck. You know, you can take it somewhere and get it done, but I want to learn it just because I want to learn. It. You know? Scooby's shaking his head. Why are you shaking I'm your shaking, head? Scooby? I'm shaking my head too. No, you don't I want to do that. I, I polished my last truck was. Um, a freight liner with a western style cutaway that's all diamond plate and one time i thought uh you know these guys charge me too much i'm gonna polish it myself and i went out and got off the stuff and i ended up looking like uh what do they call those guys uh, back in the day when they had to perform on stage? black face like me well no you're you're actually black you know but these were white guys they had to put the shoe polish <laughs> I have a high respect, that? I have a high respect and regard for policy. I mean, regardless of what their personalities are, for them to do it day in and day out, it's just sorry. I, they can have it. I'd rather pay somebody any day of the week. I won't polish my own at all. Me too. I can do it, but I ain't going to. End of discussion. Because. And it's, it's, it may sound crazy, and you guys may get it. This is what I do. But you walk up your truck, and it's dirty, and you rub your hand across the wheel, and it's like, ah, oh, no. But once you get it polished up, man, it's real nice. You go, but it's just like rubbing silk. Somebody else, and that's smooth, and it feels good. It looks good, man. That's, that's my thing. Yeah, you, walk, you, you walk by the truck, and it's all shiny and looking good. You get a little more pride about yourself. You get a little more swagger in your step, and you feel good about it. The truck seems Run better when it's polished up and clean, but man, that's mm-hmm. that's a job I don't want to do. I can do it. Got the equipment to do it, but I pay somebody else to do it. Yeah, when I did the lime haul for Walpole, I uh, I spent an hour unloading every time, and I got it all polished out at home on the weekend. And you know, I had one of the cleanest trucks in our whole fleet. <laughs> I wasn't but 25 years old running back and forth for them. Right. And, that was pretty cool. The boss came in himself and said, hey, Darren, I never have to look at your truck number. But I can always tell when you come by or I see you on the road, he said, because you got the cleanest truck here. You know, it's not, you know, most bosses won't do that, but he's a pretty nice guy. Like, we'll, we'll end on this note. What Scooby shared earlier, Cap's phrase, or saying that he, he shared was, shiny wheels make deals. So uh, you're, you're right, uh, right on target with that there, Rob. Uh, makes a better image for all of us out on the road too. Absolutely. Well, guys, that's going to be the uh, the, the end of, of this episode of uh, the Big Rig Roundtable. I appreciate all you guys uh, taking time on your Sundays to, to hop on online and, and, and share some of the tips and tricks and knowledge that you have. Rob, thanks for reaching out and wanting to be uh, involved here in the Big Rig Roundtable and get some of your questions answered. And uh, if anybody else watching this has any questions that they like answered, please leave uh, leave those questions in the form of a comment below uh, this video. Or if you want to be on the Big Rick Roundtable, uh, hit the link that will also be in the description. And, uh, leave your information there. We'll see if we can't get you on. All right, guys. Thanks, and uh, see you soon. Thanks, man. Rob, what's your... What, how, Rob, what's I your take care of you guys.